That's right. Are you all right? Thanks for clearing the way this way. That being, I presume, is the twelfth? Pretty much, yeah. We have done well, children of man. As promised, we shall reveal the truth in its entirety. Our desire is simply thus. To give ourselves unto the star as a blessing. In the twelfth millennia we have existed, we have come to harbor tremendous powers of care. Through battle, our essence shall unravel and return to the star where it might give rise to new life. Such is our final gift to you. You mean you disappear? Yes. The fragments of our former soul to serve as a core of our existence shall rejoin the life stream. Yet, though we may fade from sight, our individuality lost, our stabilizing influence shall endure. The only thing to change is that your prayers find their way. Henceforth, it shall be this the instrument of blessing that receives of mortal hopes. Hopes? I shall be given back to the star. But your presence brings comfort to mankind. Everyone would wish for you to remain. Must you truly fade away? Such gladdening things you say, child. You must confess. What we do, we also do for ourselves. When mankind overcame the final days, it so moved us that even we who are the constructs knew the greatest joy. You have shown your unfaltering love for the world. In return, we will show our undying love for you. Why not? Drifts are wont to be woven and passed down. So long as man holds a twelfth in fondness, we shall live on in your faith in us. When you say such things... The moment of parting has come. By your blessing, may you march toward a brighter future. Farewell, beloved children. And a font of ingenuity ever flow. Yours is a strength to destroy all obstacles. Am I to hurt you? And hold fast to the truth. There's meaning in your deeds. Celebrate life and embrace death. May you flourish and reap a bountiful harvest. In your limited time, have boundless compassion. Carry yourself of honor and forge on towards victory. Have a love in your heart for yourself, for others, and for the world. From past to future, the river of knowledge flows. Be part of its nourishing waters. May a wonderful new world greet you beyond destiny's horizon. A can of the ocean. And you shall weather any storm. As a 
the wind blows in feathers, may you be free to follow your heart. You need an agonized soul, Ashun. Remain with them, if that be your desire. But if it's what you dreamed of, to return to the sky together, I just, I never imagined I would go so fond of them. The parting would be so hard. We have provided them patience to rejoin the live stream. Before a drop in the river of time, that is a man's fleeting life. Why not share your fate with them? Follow your heart as you ever have. And when the time comes, we shall meet again. Hello, Derek. I've decided to continue joining a while longer. <laughs> Everyone is happy to see him. But I'm still here. I can scarce believe it myself. It cannot have been easy for Debek to break with his decision. I should like to hear what went through his head. He's back! He's really back! Words can't well express my surprise when I open my eyes to see Derek standing there. I'm naturally curious as to what happened, but above all, I rejoice, for a dear friend returned. I expect Derek has a few words to say. Let us lend him an ear. Embraced by gods. What to say in such a moment? Best to speak from the heart, I suppose. I'm glad to be back. <laughs> Me too. And we're glad to have you back. Glad hardly suffice to describe it. We're over the moon, but you're still here, Derek. Or should we call you Orshon? I no longer have Orshon's power. Derek will do. I was remade from a portion of my essence that wasn't returned to the star, and will live out my days as a man. May I ask what happened? No sooner had the troll vanished that you reappeared before us. 
Mm-hmm. At the very last, I couldn't bear it. Couldn't bear to say farewell. Your honest friendship has weighed down my steps. And the little fellow's fervent call halted them. I'm a hero. I was overwhelmed by the keenest longing to remain among you and see more of a world I love. Upon seeing me torn, my brethren bade me follow my heart. I needed no further urging. We created the instrument of blessing in the faith that, one day, the star would no longer need our guiding hand. Thanks to you, that day has finally come. You're welcome. Uh, but I ramble. How uncharacteristic. Let us head back to the Omphalos, shall we? Let's. Well, we must return to Charlie and the phone will be expecting a report. Yet, if the entire truth were to be revealed to the public, we would shake the very foundation of a worship of the Twelve. I, in penning our report, would do well to consult the forum on what details are safe to disclose. Much pertaining to the field of mythology will need to be obfuscated, I fear. Why not on my account? Inspired by our findings, I have a mind to examine the Twelve in the context of reception theory. The people's perception of deities are wont to be informed by their culture. By comparing the differences across eras and region, I believe we may uncover heretofore unseen aspects to the Twelve. Reception theory, you say. Most intriguing. I should like to see the fruit of your research when I visit Charlian. When you do, have cared not to reveal who you used to be. Our scholars would be all over you like starved beasts. I see. Perhaps I shall wait a little while before I come calling. Before I came to you, I simply roamed the world. I had no objective, nothing I wished to find. With this second chance I have, I mean to undertake my travels with a renewed perspective. But ere I set out... I would move my brethren's hopes elsewhere, to a place in man's midst. Oh, what a wonderful idea! If you don't mind, we should like to accompany you. By all means, we make for the sanctum of the Twelve in this East Shroud. Feel free to go on ahead, my friend. While this won't be my last time here, I need a moment before I leave. As a ghost as we've been in our work, you seldom have a chance to thus gather and relax. The last and only time would have been the meal in the Revenant's toll, I believe. The words of a monument are promised by the gods to watch over mankind. It is comforting to know that your promise will endure. A sanctum of a twelve. I couldn't imagine a more fitting place for my memories. And.
and of course it's raining. No matter how many times I visit the Sanctum, its majesty never falls to move me. And the rich history, originally built during the dawn of the fifth astral era, it was reclaimed by the woods before being restored in the wake of a calamity. Truly, it stands as a testament to the influence that magical civilizations and city-states have had upon Eorzean culture. This sanctum harbors the hopes of man, and now both of my brethren shall join them. If you're not averse, you would speak a little of my brethren, that is, those individuals whose essence lent them form. As it pertains to another age, some concepts may be foreign to you, but would you be interested nonetheless? Excellent. Biagod was a man with a gift for creating inanimate objects, such as buildings and furnishings. With his abilities, he served a supervisory role at the Bureau of the Architect, but he was nothing short of a pillar. His chief was carefree to a fault, you see, but he took it upon himself to ensure the work was done. Walga was a brawny man whom Vena encountered on her travels. They quickly struck up a friendship and he joined her on a quest to destroy an enormous meteor that was hurtling toward the star. It is fair to say this event gave rise to legends surrounding the Destroyer. Azima was a woman who served as a judicial officer in the Bureau of the Administrator, an experience which served her well as a warden. She was an ardent proponent of the seat of Azim and dreamed of training under Vena and her successor. Naldfall was a close personal friend of mine. A merchant by trade, he was outwardly gregarious, but also possessed a reserved side and knew quite joy in his passion for awe. When man began treating him as a dual aspect of God, it reminded me of a person he used to be, and I couldn't help but be struck with a pang of nostalgia. Novika was a landscape architect of great repute, who grew plans gathered from the star over. Despite being skilled in magic, she preferred to nurture plants as nature intended. The garden ever bloomed with beautiful flowers. All who visited were said to leave with their souls soft. Alfic was a researcher who observed newly made creations in Elpis. He possessed mastery over time magic and was known to be a kind-hearted, if reticent sort. Man. Although it was at his sister's urging that he first joined our faction, he soon became a stalwart believer in the cause and always took the initiative in discussion. Alona was a formidable warrior tasked with hunting creations that are deemed detrimental to the star. For her prowess, she had been regarded as the leading candidate for the seat of Pashtarot, preserver of discipline and order. Melfina was the youngest among us, a student affiliated with the words of La Brea at the Academia Anida. 
Even within the prestigious institution, she was considered a prodigy, and hers were the hands that created the magic to isolate and seal Zodiac. Faliak was the headmaster of the Academia in Neda, a man of learning and leadership both. He presided over the institution's myriad faculties. No known phenomenon existed in which he wasn't versed. Words do not do justice to express the remarkable scholar that he was. Namia was an observer in Elpis, like her older brother Elphic. She possessed a caring and inquisitive nature and was liked and trusted by her peers. To said that she began the custom of offering flowers to the departed. Like we did in that side quest. Limlane was a researcher in Metabaseos Talasei, a facility for observation and evaluation of sea life. So passionate was she about her work, she once threw a knife at someone who inadvertently came too close to her observation subject. Orsham was a traveler whom Benar encountered in the wilderness. They shared a campfire and discussed at length what it meant to be free. Leaving my hopes as a wanderer in this place, I shall set forth anew. As simply a man named Derek. And last but not least, the Watcher. He was the chief archivist at Anamnesis Anida and respected Renard deeply as an individual, even as he cared for her as a dear friend. Indeed, among our number, none was more devoted to Renard, and better motion made him best suited to his duty and the solitude that accompanies it. That's all. It is a lot to remember, but I should be glad if I remain with you in some way. If you're grateful, you should share with us these new aspects of Heidelin the Twelfth. Thank you. Well, it is past time we headed back to Charlien. It wouldn't do to keep Ojika waiting. I assume we'll be traveling via Limsalominsa, in which case, allow us to see you off from there. Till now I've wandered alone, but as I recently learned, a journey is better shared. Our friends are presently booking the passage. That's very rare. There's room aboard the next ship, so we'll be setting sail shortly. Oh Derek, no sooner that we arrive in a crowded place, but you up and disappear. It's a force of habit in order to avoid people. But I didn't do so anymore, do I? On the contrary, I should embrace the chance to connect with our souls. As your comrades, we completely agree. And remember, you're always welcome at the Badassian Annex, so be sure to pay us a visit. You may depend on it. Thank you, Derek, for giving us your trust. And thank you as well, Desiree. Had you not been with us, we would have struggled to grant the twelfth a wish. Well, 
we had best find our vessel. While the report remains to be completed, I believe we can officially declare our investigation complete. Till next we meet, my friends. Bye. Good journey back to Charlian. And from better to well. Do you still have time, Desiree? What for? I am back on my journey. There's a place nearby I would like to visit. Might I ask you to accompany me? Okay. Thank you. Come, we shall head outside the city. We have a tempest gate. Here, the wind whips in from the sea like a storm, but I've always found the sensation quite invigorating. Lest you wonder, I intend to strike west, and then to make my way through Upper and Outer Lanosha. And in order to mark my new beginning as a man, en route I wish to see Oshon's embrace with you. You would only accompany me across the bridge. From there I shall continue on my own. Such a great wave that was that ripped the gods' grip from the mainland. In the wake of the calamity, my brethren and I were all occupied with our respective duties. This is my very first time seeing the bridge. Shall we then? Follow Derek's lead and try not to fall behind. It's already quite impressive to behold. Ok. So it's temporarily constructive of wood. Ah, such an invigorating breeze. Oh, good. Oh, a Ferris. Your beauty truly knows no bounds. Forgive me, I was lost in thought. I look forward to the bridge's completion. It is a fine bridge, boasting splendid views and brewing with life. The very image of man's determination to overcome adversity. I'm honored that it should be named Oshon. Well, this was as far as I asked you to come. But if you're willing, might we converse a little more? It occurs to me I hadn't asked you about your opinion of a twelve. How you personally perceive us, for instance, or what you felt when you faced us. Your words from the heart I would take with me as a memento. Is that so? The others will be glad to hear that. 
Thanks for humoring me this way. And apologies for keeping you so long. I'm ready to set forth now. To witness a world filled with our blessing. To begin with, I shall tour La Nosha and visit those locales which are named after the Twelve. After which, I shall go wherever the wind blows. Together with this fellow, of course. It is such time that he tires of my company. This time I shall embrace the joy of meeting and accept the sorrow of parting. When the time comes for me to return to the star, I shall share my experiences with my brethren. Needless to say, your words will feature prominently in my recounting. You will continue your own journeys, will you not? I will. Then I shall look for you out there. Pay you well, my friend, and may the twelve bless you and keep you. Bye, you too. Have a good journey. Myths of a realm. And we get a, a adventure plate frame and music. Paintings of a twelfth will become available for purchase. For Eorzea, for Aferis. Good. And with that, I would end this episode. Until next time, I'm Mace and don't get lost.